CCTV's Nathan King has been digging through the archives to bring us some rarely seen images from those early days. Here's his report. Deng Xiaoping's 1979 visit to the U.S. epitomized the hope and potential of the new Chinese-American relationship. He was a very human figure. He put on a, put on a, a cowboy hat. He spoke about being an astronaut uh, because he was visiting Houston. Uh, he did those kinds of things. And so that was a very important moment. Building on the success of Richard Nixon's visit to China, U.S. President Jimmy Carter restored diplomatic relations, which instituted the One China policy that enabled Beijing to take its seat at the United Nations Security Council and paved the way for the biggest expansion of trade between two nations the world has ever seen. Under President Reagan, although more rocky, high-level contact between the U.S. and China continued to be cemented up until 1989 and the Tiananmen demonstrations. That was really the nadir of U.S.-China relations, and it took several years uh, to overcome that. But overcome they were, and it was really during the Clinton administration that the modern-day relationship we see today took shape. In 1993, the U.S. launched a policy of constructive engagement with China. In 1995, then First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton attended the World Conference on Women in Beijing. A year later, full diplomatic relations were re-established. And in 1999, a landmark trade agreement with Beijing led to permanent normal trade relations with China and then the accession of Beijing to the World Trade Organization. While trade boomed, reaching half a trillion dollars a year today, diplomatic incidents and crises had to be managed. In 1999, U.S. bombs destroyed the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. Three Chinese reporters were killed. There was widespread anger in China. U.S. President Clinton apologized on television for the incident. Then, in April 2001, a U.S. spy plane collided with a Chinese interceptor off the coast of Hainan Island. A Chinese pilot was killed. The U.S. crew made an emergency landing, and after a tense 11-day standoff, the 24-person U.S. crew returned to the U.S. Washington issued an apology and relations smoothed. Now, there have been rocky moments. Uh, the Belgrade incident, the Hainan plane incident, and other incidents are certainly part of that. But cooler heads generally prevail. When the Democratic People's Republic of Korea first tested nuclear weapons in 1996, Chinese diplomacy was instrumental in setting up the six-party talks as a forum for managing the crisis. And while Washington and Beijing have different views on how to handle Pyongyang, the diplomatic relationship has deepened. Present U.S.-China diplomacy is dominated by China's rise and the U.S. policy of rebalancing to Asia. Terrific. President Xi Jinping called for a new major power relationship at the presidential summit in California in 2013, and there is a deepening of ties, not just on the economic front, but strategically and politically. Both powers have unveiled ambitious policies when it comes to combating climate change, for example. But problems remain with the short-term crises like whistleblower Edward Snowden's flight to Hong Kong or deep suspicions over each other's strategic plans and alliances in the East and South China Seas and across the Pacific. Mistrust remains. It's uh, still with us despite the maturity of the relationship. And I think that means we should continue to promote a mutual understanding and uh, both sides, with the leaders and the think tank scholars and the general public, should have a better understanding of each other, each other's intention, and each other's uh, uh, restraints and the challenges. And I think that's still very, very important. Arms sales to the region of Taiwan, worries surrounding high technology transfers, cyber spying, human rights, overlapping territorial claims in the Pacific, and access to raw materials. The list of diplomatic difficulties that the US and China manage on a daily basis is long and complicated, but both agree Managing them successfully will be key, not just for the relationship between Beijing and Washington, but also for the rest of the world. Mike?